Get ready, because today we are tackling one of the biggest debates in modern defense. You've heard the headlines, the Chinese Navy has the most ships. By hull count, they are the largest naval force on the planet. But let's be honest, a naval battle isn't won by counting every patrol boat. It's won by capability, technology, and lethal power projection. Today, we're looking at the core ship classes, representing the 30 ships and many more that ensure the US Navy maintains total dominance. First up, the undisputed king of the seas, the Ford-class aircraft carrier. This isn't just a ship. It's a floating military base powered by 2A, 1B nuclear reactors that generate three times the power of the previous class. Why does that matter? It powers the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS. Instead of steam, this is a magnetic catapult, launching 25% more sorties per day with less stress on the aircraft. It's a complete rethink of air power, and it's an absolute game changer. But you can't forget the backbone of the fleet, the 10 active Nimitz-class carriers. These 100,000-ton behemoths are the proven workhorses. While the Ford class is the future, the Nimitz fleet is the dominant power of today. Each one operates with unlimited range, thanks to nuclear power, carrying an air wing of nearly 70 aircraft that can strike anywhere on the globe. Their striking power alone outmatches the capability of most entire nations. Next, the shield of the fleet and the deadliest surface ship afloat, the Arleigh Burke class destroyer, specifically Flight 3. These ships are built around the new AN divided by SPY-6 radar. This radar is so sensitive, it can track objects half the size at twice the distance of the previous system. This means it can see incoming hypersonic missiles and stealth fighters faster and farther than ever before, networking that data across the entire fleet. Truly amazing. Of course, the real battle is happening where you can't see it. Enter the Virginia-class submarine. These nuclear-powered attack subs are the apex predators of the deep. Their primary weapon isn't a torpedo, it's silence. They are coated in anechoic tiles and run on a pump jet propulsion system instead of a propeller, making them acoustically superior and virtually undetectable. They hunt other submarines and listen to undersea cables without the enemy ever knowing they are there. But the Navy needed more firepower. Check this out the Virginia class Block V. This variant adds a massive new hull section called the Virginia Payload Module, or VPM. This single module adds 28 vertical launch Tomahawk cruise missile tubes, bringing the submarine's total to 40. This ship was designed specifically to counter the missile gap, turning the stealthiest platform in the fleet into a massive undersea arsenal. While the carriers get the glory, the America-class amphibious assault ship is redefining force projection. These are often called lightning carriers. Why? Because while they are built to carry marines, they can be reconfigured to carry 20 farads, three 5B Lightning II stealth fighters. This allows them to function as a light aircraft carrier, spreading fifth generation air power all over the map, supporting the main carrier strike group from unexpected locations you still need a dedicated quarterback for the fleet, and that is the Ticonderoga-class cruiser. While these are the oldest ships in the strike group, they serve a critical function, command and control. They carry a staggering 122 vertical launch cells, more than almost any other ship, and host the admirals commanding the entire carrier strike group. They are the nerve center of the fleet, directing the fight. What about stealth above the water? The Zumwalt-class destroyer. This ship is pure science fiction. Thanks to its radical tumble-home hull, this 610-foot destroyer has the radar cross-section of a small fishing boat. But its real weapon is its power plant. It generates 78 megawatts of electricity, enough to power a small city, or more importantly, enough to power the next generation of directed energy weapons and hypersonic missiles. For sheer, overwhelming, conventional firepower, nothing beats the four modified Ohio-class SSGNs. These were once ballistic missile submarines, but they were converted to carry a different payload, 154 
Tomahawk cruise missiles. Let me repeat that. 154. A single undetected SSGN surfacing can launch an entire air campaign by itself, overwhelming and deleting an enemy's entire air defense network in minutes. How do the Marines get to the beach? The San Antonio class LPD. This is the ultimate amphibious transport dock. The entire mission of the ship is to move the Marine Corps force. Its rear well deck floods, allowing hovercraft called LCACs to fly out of the back at 40 knots, carrying M1 Abrams tanks and hundreds of troops directly onto a hostile shore. Honestly, watching it deploy is just awe-inspiring. The US Navy realized it needed more ships to patrol the vast oceans, taking the burden off the high-end destroyers. The solution is the new Constellation class frigate. This is the future workhorse. It's heavily armed, equipped with advanced sensors, and networked into the fleet, but designed to be produced in large numbers. It's the agile boxer that supports the heavyweight destroyers. Finally, the asset that truly breaks the math, the unmanned fleet. This includes the MQ-25 Stingray, the Navy's first carrier-based drone, which exists solely to refuel the F-35 Seconds and Super Hornets, effectively doubling their combat radius. Added to that are dozens of surface and subsurface Ghost Fleet drones, like the Sail Drone, using solar and wind power to conduct surveillance 24 7 multiplying the eyes of the fleet exponentially. By the end of this, you see the strategy. It isn't about matching hull for hull. It's about leveraging nuclear propulsion for unlimited range, acoustic dominance underwater, and networked sensors that see everything. The capabilities of these specific ship classes are truly remarkable, and they continue to push the boundaries of what's possible in naval warfare.